Honey, good morning. Good morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.
glory, 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 glory. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for your life on this morning. We thank God that you have joined us on this morning. We don't take it for granted on what God is doing this morning as well. Amen. We thank God that he continued to love you and love me and love all of us. Amen. So let's just go ahead and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and give him the praise. Let's go ahead and lift up his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go ahead and just thank him on this morning. We have already went into a moment of prayer. God bless everybody. We thank you for joining us. 6 a.m. morning glory prayer. This is Lady Apostle Robin Amon. We're still operating in our four spiritual weapons, and that is the weapon of prayer, the weapon of the word of God, our weapon of praise and worship, and the weapon of our testimony. Amen. We have already went into a realm, hallelujah, of prayer, amen, through us praying and asking God to forgive us of every sin that we have committed unto him and to wash us thoroughly, amen. Now it's time to go forth in the word of God because we can't obey God until we first listen to his word and then we're going to worship. So I welcome everybody. Body on this morning. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We welcome you again and we thank you for joining us. 6 a.m. morning, early hour of prayer. And so, see, we're saving our city, our country, our communities, our children, our county. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. We're glad that you joined us. We love you on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. And guess what, y'all? Never stop praying. That's right. It's time to pray. Hallelujah. It's time to know and understand the point of walking with God is to keep going forward. Amen. And never underestimate a woman or a man with a prayer and a plan. Why? Because we're praying, y'all. That's right. Sword TV. Hallelujah. Live on Facebook. Join us. Go ahead and like this page and send it to somebody. We're also on iHeartRadio, YouTube. Come on, y'all. It's time to pray right now in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and go into the Word of God. And again, let's put our weapons of praise on it. That's right. Jesus did it. I put a super-duper praise on that one. Satan, you can't have our children. You can't have our county. You can't have our country. You can't have our city. You definitely cannot have our communities in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, let's go ahead and worship and praise. We welcome you. We worship in the Lord, y'all. That's all we know to do is worship the Lord and never stop praying. That's right. Pray without ceasing. It's time to pray, y'all. But let's go ahead and get into the word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On last week, we began to talk about I have a dream, amen. We begin to talk about Joseph and his dream that God has given unto him. And in spite of the dream that God has given unto him, he also had to walk, a walk of going through the circumstances that he went through. And that was that his brothers, amen, except one brother, amen, hallelujah, Reuben did not want to see him, amen, to be cast away as his other brothers did. But at the same time, we know that one of his brothers, named Reuben, loved Joseph. He always felt and always showed kindness towards Joseph than his other brothers. Even when they began to plot and say, let's kill him. Let's throw him into a pit in the wilderness and leave him there to die. But it was Reuben. It was Reuben after they had gone away. He is the one who lived Joseph out of the pit and took him. He wanted to make sure that he didn't die. Amen. If he can just take him back to his father. If he can just take him back and say, hey, guess what? This is what my brothers tried to do to your son. Amen. But at the same time, guess what? 
he knew he couldn't do that because all of his brothers would have been against him. Amen. But what he did do is he allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery. He did not leave him there in that pit. He didn't leave him there to die. But he brought him out and he took him to be sold into slavery. Amen. That was most the hardest thing that he probably could ever do. 20 pieces of silver. He sold his only brother, baby brother, not only brother, baby brother, to people he did not even know. Amen. But at the same time, we know that if it wasn't for Reuben, amen, we wouldn't know what would happen to Joseph. So I'm just telling y'all, in every dream that God give us, in every pit we may be in, Know that it is the word of God that will bring us out. But just imagine being sold for only 20 pieces of silver. Amen. And it was all about him and that coat of many colors. It was all about the favoritism that his father showed towards him. Only if his father could have just maybe treated him equally. Or maybe didn't show so much love as he did, which caused his other brothers to hate him so much. Joseph was just on this journey alone. He didn't have no one else. He would have thought at least being a baby brother, hey, I got my big brothers, somebody that can protect me and, and, and help me. But these are the same ones that left me to die. These are the same ones that went back and told my father a lie that I was dead. And that I was devoured by wild animals. Amen. By dipping my coat into blood to show a sign of me being probably eaten by an animal. He, he figured that in his mind. How wicked. But at the same time, that's life. Anytime you have a dream, there's always going to be some of Joseph's brothers lurking around. Lurking around to see. Lurking around just to see. And then remember when he was brought into Potiphar's house and Potiphar gave him favor. There go another one of Joseph's brothers waiting in disguise. Potiphar's wife lurking to see how she can try to also interrupt the dream and the word that God gave him to Joseph by accusing him of raping her. What a strong accusation. You know, people will always try to tear down your character, tear down your integrity. You know, it's called assassination. You know, they will always try to assassinate your name and who you are because it's hard to rebuild the name. But see, when you trust in the Lord, no matter what they say, the Lord will fight for you. And he will come and he will protect you. And not only protect you, but he will protect your name. And then guess what? The same pit that they dug for you, they will fall in their own pit. Amen. We know the story. Even with. Um, we know the story. Even when you go to Esther. Amen. Hallelujah. So be careful. When you try to dig a pit for somebody else. Because God will make also. Make you fall in your own pit. Amen. Because we shouldn't try to dig pits for people. We should try to lift them up and cultivate them and push them into their purpose and destiny. Just like Joseph did. When he began to interpret the dreams of the baker and the butler. You know, that's kind of where we left off at. When God gave him an opportunity to really work out his gift, even while being in prison. You know, we may look at a prison to be in something, a place that is dreary and cold and dark. But sometimes our prisons... Amen. Help us and push us towards our purpose and destiny. I'm not talking about in the prison of bondage. But sometimes when we're in a circumstance or a situation that we're not used to or some situation or circumstance that we feel that, hey, why me? If we just sit there and go through the process, God is birthing something out of our matrix and our inward parts to be produced, to be able to multiply and subdue and replenish and to be fruitful and to take dominion but sometimes we're like a microwave we want to pop in and pop out in 20 seconds and be hot 
only to last for so short of a time. But when we're in that oven and we're baking on 475 degrees, my God, what an anointing comes out of that. An anointing of a glory, a kabah, in the name of Jesus, that bring forth power and demonstration of God's manifestation. So we learn to stay in that oven and be cooked, right? Hallelujah. And Joseph stayed in that oven. And he was cooked. He was thrown in the pit, away from his life, away from the love that his mom and father had for him. To be raised up in a stranger's home, in slavery, in jail. But he began to just deal with the matter. He didn't cook murmur, he didn't complain. He began to make just the best out of it. Sometimes we just need to make the best out of our situation. I'm not telling us to stay there. No, 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 no. We don't stay there. See, it's not what you do when you get there. It's what do, it's what do you do to get out of there. See, you got to get up and keep it moving. You can't fall down and have a pity party and feel sorry for yourself. Why? Because the spirit of rejection, the spirit of abandonment, self-pity, low self-esteem, all these things begin to build up within us. And now we're not able to walk in who we're called to be. We don't have the authority or the power to call things forth because we feel that we're less than because of the circumstance that we may be in. But that is the time when your voice needs to arise. And your voice needs to come forth. And your voice needs to speak out. Because there's power and authority in, the, in your mess. There's power and authority in your fire. There's power and authority in your presence. When you know how to call it forth and call it out, you begin to bring something into manifestation. That it begins to produce and begins to multiply. And that begins to be fruitful. But if you stay there, it would never prosper. If you stay there, it would never bow out to be anything. Joseph decided, hey, I can interpret these dreams for the butler and for the banker. Even though I know they're promising me, saying what they'll do once they get out. But I'm so used to people making empty promises. So I don't even allow frustration or disappointment to overtake me. Because you know a lot of times when people make us empty promises, what happens is the spirit of what? Frustration. The spirit of distrust. The spirit of, come, come on, all those spirits that I'm talking about begin to arise in our life. So now, like, we don't believe what people say. Even though God may be sending somebody in our life that is really going to be there to help us and push us and cultivate us into our next level. But because we've been disappointed and because we've been frustrated and because we've been let down and it's like an empty say or empty word, we don't really see through it. That's why we pray that God gives you a spirit of discernment. So that you would be discerning, discerning to see that these are your destiny helpers. This is your divine helpers. These are those that are sent by God. Don't look at the outside, but know them by the spirit. And I believe that Joseph began to just be comfortable where he was because he knew that he had not only a dream, but he had a word from God. And anytime you get a word from God, you know it's going to what? Make a withdrawal. It's not going to come back insufficient, but it's going to come back sufficient. And you're going to gain something. Amen. He knew that if he just hold on a little longer, the same favor that God gave him when he was brought out of slavery, even though he was put into a pit to die, God can also bring him out of this prison and bring him right back into place because God showed him, hey, the moon and the stars would bow down. And even your brothers and your father would bow down. And that you would be a ruler over many, glory to God. So therefore, these words have to come to pass. So all he had to do was just hold on to that word. And know that if he hold on to that word, guess what? He know that at the end of the day, that the dream that he had, amen, shall come forth. Because at the same time, that's what the butler and the baker said. I have a dream. Or I have dreamed a dream. Amen. And then he would begin, they would begin to tell Joseph what the dream was about. And then Joseph began to interpret the dream. But the thing is, there was so much power in the interpretation that Joseph released because the dreams began to what manifest. So that he let them know that, hey, this is not my power. 
The power is not in me, but God. It is God who gives us the answer. It is God who reveals to redeem. Then the word got back to Pharaoh. Hey, that Joseph boy that you threw in prison. Not only is he a dreamer, but he's an interpreter of dreams. God had given him a gift to be able to interpret. And Pharaoh know that he was having many dreams. Didn't know half of what many of them meant. But at the same time, he began to realize that he can just interpret these dreams. Maybe I won't live in such a distress. Maybe I won't live in such a torment because I can't understand these dreams. But at the same time, we know that God sent Joseph there, not only to just interpret uh, Pharaoh's dream, but to also be that individual who would help him get through what he was going to be facing in the famine. That's why it was seven years of famine and seven years of, of, of reproduction, uh, multiplication. So God began to even allow Joseph to be to get prepared, to be able to sit and to be able to have the wisdom to know what to do in these first seven years in order to build and rebuild, in order to put things into place so that when this famine come, they will not go hungry, that when this famine come, not only would he be able to feel, feed those that are within the kingdom, but he'd also be able to feed those outside the land. And also, his family would even have to come so that reconciliation would begin to take place because that is the purpose of the story. So that reconciliation can come between his brothers and his father because of what they have done to him in his childhood. Hallelujah. And even though we know that his father didn't have nothing to do with his death, but at the same time, he had a dream. And when his son told him the dream, he said, boy, enough of that. No, 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 I no. quit saying that. I'm, I, I'm your daddy. I, I'm not bowing down. I'm just paraphrasing it, y'all. I'm just saying. He, he, he said, no, no, uh-uh, I'm your father. How, how, how can you see me bowing down to you? You're you going to be serving me, even though I know that Joseph will serve his father. But Joseph wasn't saying it in that capacity. He was just saying that he would be in place to be able to help whatever is going to happen, which we know which is going to happen because when Pharaoh began to interpret the dream to Joseph, this is really the calling of what Joseph was chosen to do. And it was, it was meaningful that Joseph had to go through that pit because it also gave him the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding on how to rule the land how to have patience, how to be compassionate, how to forgive, how to set things in order. Amen. See, um, Pharaoh began to, to say, now I ain't just have one dream, but let me just tell you about the first dream I had. He said, I was standing by the river and I saw seven fed and handsome cows come up from the river to feed in the grass. And while they were feeding, seven other cows followed them up from the river, very thin and poor and lean. Amen. And then he said that this was such a miserable sight. And, and the seven lean cows ate up the seven fat cows. And after they had eaten them up, they were a lean and miserable as before. Then he said, I woke up. My God, what a dream. And then he said, I fell asleep again and dreamed again. Now, hold on. I'm not done. I had a second dream. He said, I saw seven heads of grain growing up on those stalk, large and strong and good. And when seven heads came up after them, that were being and poor and withered. And the seven thin heads swallowed up the seven good heads. And after was worse than poor and withered as before. Now, come on, y'all. And I told these two dreams to all of the wise men. And there is no one who can explain them. Can you tell me what these dreams mean? After he done thrown him in prison again. After he knew he knew Joseph's spirit, he knew Joseph's heart. But remember I said that whatever his wife said, he's going for it, y'all. So he, he really knew that. I know Joseph couldn't have done up like that. But that's my wife. And I got to make sure that whatever my wife say, even though I may not believe her, but I still have to do something because that's my wife. But see, that's the thing. We must stand up for truth. We can't go with a lie. 
when we know that there's lies and we know that there's things that's going on that is not the will of God, we have to remove ourselves. We have to begin to speak forth and cut and speak up the truth so that the manifestation of God's glory and his deliverance can take place in a person's life. But at the end of the day, after he came and he said, do you know what these dreams mean? And come on now. It's Joseph. Come on, this sermon began to turn on. He didn't just instantly just say it, but just as I just paused right there. He didn't think about, oh, Pharaoh threw me back in prison. Oh, Pharaoh believed his wife. Oh, oh, um, oh, you know, he, 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 he did not believe, he did not allow, he did not allow what happened to him. Hallelujah. Take toll on him. But he began to still act out in his calling and the authority that God gave him through interpretation. And then he said the two dreams have the same meaning. He said God has been showing has been showing you what to do in the land. The seven good cows mean seven years. And the seven good heads of grain means the seven years. The same seven years. The seven lean cows and the seven thin heads of grain also mean seven years. Which we know seven is what? Complete. The good cows and the good grain mean seven years of what? Plenty. And the seven thin cows and seven thin heads of grain means years of what? Famine. The poor years. There are coming upon the land of Egypt seven years of such plenty as never seen before. When the field shall bring what? A greater crop. That's right. A greater, a greater crop means many. A greater crop than ever before. And after those years shall come, seven years when the field shall what? Bring no crops at all. So you're going to have um, seven years of plenty and seven years of lack. And then for the seven years, there would be such a need that the years of plenty would be forgotten. But the people would have nothing to eat. Amen. So these dreams have the same meaning. Now let King Pharaoh find some man who is able and wise and let him set these men to rule over the land. And during the seven years of plenty, let a part of the crops be put away for the years of need. If this shall be done, then when the years of need come, there will be plenty of food for all people and no one will suffer for all will have enough. Come on now. This gave Joseph an opportunity to what? To make a declaration. He began to decree and declare through the words when he began to speak into Pharaoh's life and say, okay, this is what needs to be done. So he begins to set out a plan. I told you never underestimate a woman or a man with a, pl- with, with, a plan, with, a, with a prayer or a plan. So Joseph had a plan. Why? Because Joseph was sent. Joseph was called for this. Joseph was built for this. Joseph was anointed for this. And Joseph suffered for this. So God gave him this opportunity right now to what? Have favor with man. He was about to have favor with man. The same favor that God showed him when God showed him the stars and the moon bowing to him. When God began to show his brothers and his father bowing to him. It was about to come to pass. Amen. And Pharaoh, hallelujah, said to Joseph, since God has shown you all of this, there is no other man as wise as you. Come on now. God changed his heart. God didn't let him look at, okay, what my wife said. What my wife said that you've done. He didn't allow that he even forgave Joseph, even though it didn't happen. So God even allowed him to have the spirit of forgiveness to come upon him because he believed his wife. So he had to have a spirit of forgiveness to come upon him in order for him to what trust Joseph again. Because that means that Joseph will be around his wife again. He will be in his house. He will be close to them. So even the spirit of forgiveness began to take place even with Pharaoh. Glory to God. Because God was about to do a super duper reconciliation between his brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. God was setting things up through this dream. And Pharaoh said, no, 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 there's no one, no other man as wise as you. So guess what? I will appoint you to do this work and to rule over the land of Egypt. Come on, y'all. All the people should be what? Under you. And only the throne of Egypt would I be above you. 
Come on now. It already just came to pass. It done happened. Because God gave him the spirit of interpretation. To interpret what's good. To interpret what's going to be plentiful. And then what to interpret what's going to be lacking. But then there was a solution. If we can do it like this in the first seven. When the other seven of lack come. Guess what? We ain't even got to deal with the lack because we're going to have so much of overflow that we ain't going to really see it. Y'all won't see it. I don't know it, but y'all won't see it because I'll be able to measure, measure it out to where everybody will benefit, not just us in the kingdom, but those that's going to come apart. Because guess what, y'all? I'm about to be reconciled back to my family. And my family is afar. So I know if my family coming from afar, there's going to be plenty more families coming from afar. But guess what? When they get here, they're going to have something to eat. They will not die of this famine. Come on now. So so Pharaoh took from his own hand the ring, which he held it. And this was the seal. Amen? And he put it on Joseph's hand. Amen? And this was a sign for a seal of what he had asked Joseph to do. This was a commitment. This was a vow. This was a covenant. This was something that binded them together and what they agreed that one another would do to help each other. Amen. Then he dressed Joseph in robes of fine linen and he put around his neck a gold chain. Come on now. Came out of slavery. Came out of those I don't believe that Joseph had on dirty clothes in, in prison anyway. I believe that he still had on a little something, a little swag. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I just believe that God would never just leave us, leave us in rags. Amen. But he'll leave us in such a great, beautiful apparel so that we are walking in our purpose and destiny while we're in our pit, while we're in a fire. Amen. And then after he placed the ring on him that showed the right hand of authority and placed the robe of fine linen on him to show that he represents the kingdom and put the gold chain around him that represented, hallelujah, ownership. Then he placed him on a chariot to let them know he is ranking now behind me. This is the man that will rule over you. And Joseph just cried out. And he bowed on his knees. And he just began to thank God. Finally, the dream that he had. Finally, the word of God began to manifest. It was just the beginning, y'all. But guess what, y'all? It's time to go. That's right. 6 a.m. early morning prayer our prayer and that hour is right now so tomorrow we're going to finish this out we're going to talk about him riding on that chariot we're going to talk about how that ring of authority began to put him in place and how his fine linen and the chain around his neck began to show the authority that god has given up to him and how god is going to reconcile him back to his family just as God brought forgiveness unto Pharaoh. Amen. Because Pharaoh had to forgive him in order to place such a standard on him and for him to rule the land after he was accused of raping his wife. Come on, that was a sign of forgiveness. Even though we know it wasn't true. We know that Joseph didn't do that. We know that the wife lied. But remember I told you, God will defend you. God will speak for you. So you don't have to fight your battles. Take them to God. Let him do it for you. In Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you on this morning. We thank you for a word of prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for your spiritual weaponries. Your weapon of prayer. Your weapon of praise and worship. And the weapon of the word of God on this morning. Because, Lord God, we thank you for the dream that you have given us. We thank you for the word. And God, we thank you for our weapon of our testimony. That's right. Because it's by the word of our testimony, oh God. You have revealed to redeem, oh God. Because God, we trust you. And we know because your love endures forever. 
and we don't take it for granted. We continue to pray for our city, our country, our county, our communities, our children. Hallelujah. We come against every racism, every prejudice, every injustice, equality, hate. We come against every violence. We come against every confusion. We come against every murdering spirit in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we decree and declare, we call forth unity. We call forth liberty. And I decree and declare on this day that you walk in liberty. And you walk upright in who God has created you to be. Because he's given us spiritual authority. And he has said to us, he blessed them. And he told us to be what? Fruitful and to multiply and to replenish. Hallelujah. And to subdue and take dominion. And I decree and declare on today that you are taking dominion. I remove every filthy garment from your life. And I place a cloak of praise, a cloak of worship. A cloak of holiness, a cloak of pureness, a cloak of love, a cloak of God's joy, a cloak of the peace that's already within you, those that are in Christ Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we don't take it for granted. And we thank you. That's right, y'all. 6 a.m., hour of prayer. It's time to pray. God bless you. And I am Lady Apostle. God bless you. And we will be back. God's will. Amen. Glory to God. Enjoy your day. And know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we definitely going to rejoice and be glad therein. We love you. And we thank you. Welcome. We're glad that you were here to hear the word of God. We welcome you. And we're glad that you joined us live on Facebook. Soar TV iHeartRadio, 257 countries listening in. Amen. Never stop praying, y'all. That's right. We can't obey God until we first listen to his word. And we have heard the word of the Lord on today. It's time to pray in Jesus' name. Follow me, Lady Apostle Robin Stokes. God bless you. And have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen and glory to God.